Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. In this episode, we got a Mercedes W108, W109, and the problem we're having is it runs really, really hot, especially when you're like getting coffee and you're sitting in line, or on super hot days, you know, plus 30, days like that. You can't even drive it. It gets hot to the point where it stalls and it won't start back up again until you let it cool down. Let me go inside the car and show you a few things, guys. Okay, so basically the normal operating temperature, guys. So right here on your gauge, this isn't Fahrenheit. Like your car should be, you know, this needle should be at the halfway point roughly. You know, maybe a little bit higher at most. In our case, it starts to creep up close to the red. And like I said, on hot days, can't even use the car. Like if it's plus 20, I can drive it around, but I still can't sit and stop traffic for a long time. So I figured out a way that I'm gonna fix this. The problem is the radiator. So let me pop the hood and I'll show you what's going on. So the radiator, guys, is completely clogged on this car. I've tried bring it to a shop to get it dipped and stuff. And in the end, I mean, I got it dipped, they cleaned it, and it just, it just too corroded. Here, let me show you inside. See what I mean? Like some of these are completely clogged and it's not flowing very good. See, there's some clogged ones. See, what I noticed is even if the engine's super duper hot, right? If I like put my hand on the rad here on the sides, um, it's not even hot at all. Like it's completely ice cold. The reason for that is, the the water is not flowing through it get it it's only flowing through a few of them so it's clogged so we got three choices guys choice number one we can buy a brand new rad 1500 dollars plus shipping that's choice number one choice number two we can take this rad out bring it to a shop and they will record it for us what that means is they'll keep this top piece and the bottom piece and they'll take all these out and they'll put new ones in and that costs about $500, guys. A lot better than $1,500. But I'm going to show you a way to do it for like $100. So right here, guys, we have a brand new radiator. And I paid like $100 on eBay for this. It is a brand name radiator. And this is out of a newer Mercedes. Like, not as old as that. A newer one. And I mean, it's almost identical. Like... These for the automatic transmissions are the same. This is in the same spot. This one is a little bit more over this way. Like on ours, it would be like over here. And that's about the only differences. And also this one is about that much skinnier. Like that's the only difference guys. Otherwise this should work great. And this was super cheap. And this is an aluminum radiator. It's got more cores than this original one. It's a double core, it's very thick. It's actually thicker than the original Mercedes uh, one that it's supposed to go into. So in this episode, guys, I'm gonna show you how to fix this for about $100, guys, using this radiator, how to make it work. We are gonna have to create some brackets and things to make this fit into that. Okay, let's get started right away. Okay, guys, so see we got them lined up here together. So it's just a little bit skinnier, you know what I'm saying? The height's the same, so that's good. Um, so the bottom, where the bottom hose connects, that's in the same place, which is great. Um, the two connectors for the transmission are in the same place, and they're the same, so that will work. Uh, the only difference is, like, see, this is a little bit more over, so we might have to extend this hose or use a hose off of something else. We will get to that in this video. Don't worry about that. I'll make it all work. So instead of butting this thing up to the, this is the oil engine oil cooler. So instead of butting this up like that, see that will cause this to be even further. And then the, the space will be on that side. Um, I think what we're gonna do guys, is we're actually gonna make it like that. You get what I'm saying? We'll have to fill the space in between that and that so the shroud works and air doesn't go through here and you lose your 
cooling ability from your fan and your driving. Okay, the first thing we gotta do, guys, is underneath the car, guys, so right here, we're gonna have to drain the oil cooler. We're gonna have to drain all the coolant out of the radiator right there. And we're gonna have to drain the engine oil. So at the end of this, we're gonna do an engine oil change as well. So we're gonna drain all those. And then once those are drained, we're gonna have to disconnect this hose, that bottom hose to the uh, transmission or to the oil cooler for the engine. We're gonna have to disconnect these hoses here, uh, the bottom hose, disconnect the shroud from the radiator, right? And there's like these donuts here that that's how the these rads are in place. Our, one of ours is even broken. So you just slide those donuts off. I mean, I'm gonna leave all this out of the video, guys. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna do all that right now. I'm gonna pull both this and this out. I have to have it out of the car to, to rig this up and show you guys how to make this work, guys. So I'm doing that right now. And if something weird or complicated happens along the way, I will add it to this video, but I'm guessing it'll go smooth as silk. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you. So I kinda placed this rat on top of this one here. We, we might even put it like this. I don't know yet, we'll decide. And then we'll fill this space, right? On that side, that'll work. The only thing we'll have to do is extend this hose or try to find a different hose. I'll let you know in this video. Okay, so that's the plan, guys. Cause see the shroud here, you wanna make sure that like, there can't be a hole of nothing. Cause then it'll just suck air through there and it won't cool the rad. It, it, You'll, you'll see. I'll get to it. Okay, I'm taking this out now. Okay, so basically everything is disconnected. Like this thing is ready to come out. But I decided to make my life easier because it's tough to get through things. I'm going to take the fan off. Uh, there's just four see bolts right there. So I'm going to, I think they're like 10 mils. So I'm going to get those off, take the fan off, and then that rattle just pop right out okay guys here it is we got it out as you can see um so there's like two nuts and bolts holding this rad to this rad right so my plan is see, i'm gonna put this one on top right now okay so i put it on top and i'll tell you right now this is all gonna work great so uh this nut and bolt that holds the one rad to the other rad see we can put that one into this hole right this back one we're gonna have to drill a hole through here we're gonna mark exactly where right and then that will join the two together see the tops line up perfectly so everything will work there obviously here we're gonna have to add um, a little section so i'll do that last and see the bottom of these like see this one is lower which is perfect because See, this had to curve in order for that hose to clear the uh, sway bar, right? But in this case, it's all higher, see? It's just higher to the point where that'll just go right on there. So that'll work perfect. See what I mean? Those line up the same. Everything's looking good, guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate the two rods. I'm going to start with that. And I know that this is the hole I'm gonna be using. Not the first one, the second one. So I'm gonna attach it and then I'll figure out where this hole's gonna have to be. Okay, just before I move on. So the way this rad sits in there, see there's these like rubber things right there. They're kind of like out dented, right? There's one on this side, one on that side. See the rubber thing just came off, right? So that goes on there and those slide in, see, into that. And on the other side, it slides into that. See what I mean? Right in there. So that's what holds it in place. So what I'm gonna do before I take this thing apart is I gotta take some precise measurements, right? So I know how long this is supposed to be, like maybe from there, you know, to this thing. So I know where our new piece is gonna have to go that we're gonna add to the right side of this rad, right? So we're gonna measure that. We're gonna measure the bottom. I'm gonna write everything down. So 
So that's, you know, that's the measurement there in case you're curious, right? Um, and also, see this unhooked here, see? So maybe we can unhook it there and just use this whole piece and put it in the end. I'm not a big fan of breaking this rod because, um, you know, I might one day want to record or something. But I don't think I ever will because this is going to work really, really good. Because you know it will. Because if it doesn't work, I would never make this video. So you already know it worked because I wouldn't post a video if the car wasn't running cooler than ever. So this is going to work 100%. Okay, just one more thing. I got this all lined up. So basically this uh, lip here and the old lip on the old one, see? They're basically at the same height for that to line up. So everything's working there. So what that means on the other side, right? When we go over here, if we do end up using uh, this bracket, but so see, this is just underneath a tiny bit. So if we end up putting it on this like further out, it'll be just underneath this bracket. You get what I'm saying? So it wouldn't be like over here, like this top part. And yeah, there's this weird thing here. Somebody welded this on. They got sick of using the donuts. So they welded that on and they were just a nut and bolt there. So I kind of like that it's sturdy. So anyways, so just wanted to point that out. So this piece will be just underneath there, wherever it is. Okay, I'm gonna measure everything now. Okay guys, so we got the new rad lined up, see? And what we did is we took a marker, see, and we marked with a marker where the hole's gonna have to be. And we're gonna drill a hole all the way through this and this. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so we got it attached. And as you can see, this is working perfect. So we got this flush. Uh, you want the side where the fan is to be flush. The other side doesn't have to be because the fan shroud has to be flush onto this. So what we did is here, I'll lift it up and show you. So what we did on the other side, see, since this is like a little bit fatter, right? But that's perfect right there. So like that's where the shroud connects, right? To those. And it'll be flush with um, this part, right? Okay, so anyways, so see we just put a couple bigger nuts in there. Like that, see, and then we tighten the other side. See, so there's a little space there, which is totally fine. Okay, so that part is attached. Now let's start figuring out what to do there. Okay, guys, so moving on to this section of our project. So on our measuring tape, see, we put a little line. Um, and that line lines up with this, see? And what that means is we need to add on this side two and a half inches, right? Because we need this to end right there. So two and a half inches, right? Or sorry, two inches and a quarter. Two inches and a quarter, as you can see, okay? But see on this, so I am gonna take this piece off, I decided. Um, the bottom's already off, so no big deal there. The top, I'm just gonna cut it right here with an angle grinder. See, it's like, no big deal. I don't need this top section. I just need this. Anyway, so right here, I'm going to show you something. See, like, this is where we measured it to, like this, right? But see on the inside of it, how it goes in? So that is a quarter inch. Like, see what I mean? This, this flares in. So the inside of that would take away a quarter inch from this measurement. You'll understand in a minute, guys. So anyways, what I'm doing now is we're gonna take this two and one quarter measurement and we're gonna bring it back to two inches, right? And then that way we'll have enough room to fit this thing. And also this side, these holes are like rectangles, so they are adjustable. So you can move this in or out if we need to tweak it. Okay, so now you're going to need a piece of sheet metal just skinny stuff, the equivalent of like a car door. See, so I already measured it out. I took uh, two inches plus two inches plus an inch. I'll show you what the inch is for, right? So I got five inches this way and I got uh, 15 and a half inches that way. And we're just gonna cut this thing out with an angle grinder. See what I mean? So there's 15 and a half inches from about there to about there. So that's the length of it. And in here, 
we want this to go on the inside of these two uh, brackets here so it looks nice um, see so on the inside of it if it's an inch thick it'll work uh, on the inside okay I'm gonna go cut that out right now guys don't worry guys this is gonna look awesome and guys you know doing it this way one it's way way cheaper than any other way you could imagine how to do it and secondly if I ever need a new rad guess what I can just get the same rad again for a hundred uh, 120 bucks or whatever and there you go I, I never have to worry about a $1,500 rad again in my whole entire life this thing will be converted okay here we go I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut this rectangle out okay guys and that's that we got our pieces let's get down to business okay guys so i got this thing here and i just realized i did make a mistake right so if if that's two inches that's one inch and that's two inches right so i measured it like this right from from the edge um but i i, I don't know bad thinking but that's got to go in right so i am short as you can see um so anyways i need it to be two and a half inches two and a half inches one inch two and a half inches so i'm gonna go remake this right now i'll uh i'm including this in the video because you know these are the kind of mistakes that happen when you're fabricating things from scratch right two and a half one inch two and a half so i'm gonna go recut this right now okay so we got our wider piece we remade it take one of these scotch brights just want to scuff it up uh this is like 320 grit sandpaper basically you buy these at paint stores canadian tire <clears throat> whatever because we're going to be painting this right you scuff it up just lightly so the paint has something to stick to okay good enough okay so now on the other side we're going to mark out uh, two and a half inches one inch two and a half inches i'm going to do that right now okay there it is see we drew the lines um i actually ended up going a little bit more than two and a half i'd say like two and three quarters almost somewhere in between there you're gonna have to play around with that but for me this should work so now we're gonna take the grinder we're not gonna cut it but we're just gonna put a little groove into it right on that line right on the other line so it bends easy so i'm gonna do that right now <laughs> Okay, and just like that, see, we got two little grooves that'll make it easier to bend. So we're actually gonna uh, scotch bright this really quick and we're gonna spray some paint into these cracks just so they don't rust in 10 years from now or whatever. Okay, so I'll do that right now. Okay, see, we got, this board is like an inch thick, basically. We got the you know the sides with the little slices facing down we got this all clamped super duper good so we should be able to bend this down and possibly even hammer it okay well that went super good as you can see right we just got bend it a little bit more on both sides and there we go our piece is ready guys look how nice that looks okay guys now we take our beautiful custom made piece here and we're just gonna slide it in just like that you get what i'm saying we're gonna get a permanent marker and we're gonna mark where we gotta drill the holes and we're gonna drill these holes first screw this in right and then we're gonna figure out where this piece goes yeah it's all coming together guys see what i mean something like that i'll show you how to do that okay so let's do this first okay so we got the nuts and bolts all the way through on this thing it's on there but see it kind of moves still which i'm not super happy about so i got a plan for that later but but th this is on exactly where it's going to be so now we're going to take this piece right and what we need to do is it needs to go right in the middle of this right and the height here remember it goes just just like we talked about in the video earlier just underneath this part right this part here 
goes underneath this part just under so pretty easy to eyeball that right so we're gonna do that and then right in here we're gonna drill a hole all the way through this one and that one and on this side we're gonna drill a hole right through there into there we're gonna put a nut and bolt from each side and then this will be basically part of that so we're doing that right now let's do it okay so i'm just trying to figure out where these holes are going to be but see what i mean like this kind of moves around so what i'm going to do is right here you know right there and on the this side i'm going to put a couple self tappers in and that'll really hold it together self tappers plus those nuts and bolts self tappers are just screws with their own little drill bit right i'm going to screw it in it's going to catch all both of these metals together so i'm going to do that right now okay i got the self tappers in just like i said i would both sides and now this thing is like a hundred percent solid it doesn't move no matter what right so now i'm going to take this piece and i mean it's pretty easy to eyeball this i already know the height right so right there kind of mark the holes so what you want to do is you want to have this screw hole flush with this part see what i mean for the shroud and this screw hole flush so you're gonna move it down flush with that part and then you mark your hole so i'm gonna have to remark this one now and then i'm gonna screw this thing in okay there it is and i mean that looks awesome so i just want to show you guys how this is all set up right so i got nuts and bolts on this on the inside see you can see that i mean this is super super sturdy so the only thing we got left now is we're gonna tape this up with some tape see we got some tape there and we're just gonna do like three light coats and paint this black uh, i'm just gonna do that right now off camera i mean painting's painting right you tape that up three light coats you untape it so i'll do that right now and remember guys we still have to get the shroud to fit there's some mods we got to do there okay so i got one coat of paint down she's looking pretty nice two more coats to go um we're gonna move on to the shroud now okay so we placed the shroud on top of this thing right you line up all the holes everything's looking good right but um the top the top uh this thing's good everything's good there see down here that's fine see this one here we're gonna have to mark a little circle like this and cut it out with a grinder just like we cut the metal right here we're gonna have to cut out a little circle as well right for the tranny cooler and right here and i mean that's no big deal you just cut a little circle out so i'm gonna mark that right now okay see there it is that's how we're gonna cut that out that's how we're gonna cut that out and that's how we're gonna cut that out and this is all oily and dirty and i'm not one for cleaning everything because i actually use this car as an everyday driver it does look mint there's no rust nothing but it's an everyday driver so i'm not going to clean the motor every three days every time i take it out it looks like a normal motor in a normal car okay i'm going to cut that right now there you get the idea okay i'm going to do the rest okay guys here it is all painted up i mean look how sweet that looks that looks basically original nobody would ever even know except for you guys watching this okay so i'm gonna put the shroud on and there is a problem okay so i got the shroud on and i mean it fits perfect see like this lines up with that it's completely flush everything's looking good but if you go to this side see there is a about a quarter inch gap not there that's all good i didn't realize it i just looked at the uh, old rad and and this actually stuck out a little bit like like where this is flush on the rad this whole thing actually stuck out a quarter inch more this way like see what i mean that amount so that's no problem all we got to do guys is remember how we attach this with these uh see we got these washers here so i mean all we got to do is take one away and then add one 
on this side under there. And that'll move this whole radiator over just about the right amount. Uh, I might have to play around with different washers and stuff. So I'm gonna unscrew that and move that over right now. Okay, so I got the shroud off, just in case you're confused, see? Um, this part does not go flush with the other screw. This goes over a quarter inch this way, right? So underneath these bolts, uh, we're just gonna have to put a quarter inch washer there and there. And you have to do it because otherwise this thing's not gonna line up right and your rad's gonna kinda sit like this, right? So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, I put the shroud on, I laid it down and as you can see, it's perfect. See, it's tight there and it's tight everywhere else. So that's what that needed to be a quarter inch forward. See what I mean? She's perfect. So that's one tight shroud. Everything works good, guys. Okay, let's pull this thing off. Let's see if this thing will fit into there now. Okay, guys, this thing should just slide right in as long as I measured everything right. And I'll tell you one thing, this weighs like 50 pounds less than the other one. Okay guys, as you can see, she honestly fits perfect. Um, I don't see any issues here. The only thing is I'm gonna have to pull it back out now, put the shroud on, right? Because it won't pass the power steering pump and the donuts as well. So like this donut, I have to put it on there and then slide it down and then hook it up. So I'm gonna pull that out, put the shroud in, put it back. As far as the bottom hose goes, I mean, yes, so this comes out straight, right? But now, see, it's so much higher that it's not gonna hit this. Like before it came up on an angle to clear this here. I don't think that's gonna be an issue now at all. So everything's looking good, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna do that right now, take it out, do all that, and keep watching, guys, because there's still gonna be stuff that's kind of complicated. And also the top radiator hose, we need to figure out how to do that or out of what vehicle it will fit okay as you can see i got the shroud attached everything super solid guys and i mean it looks great check it out from the front it looks like it belongs honestly nice aluminum rad it's gonna cool way better than that copper one no matter what okay so even if the copper one was brand new so now we're gonna hook up the transmission lines and as you can see with this being higher, like there's so much room here. So you're just gonna make sure you wipe anything that got on there. So we're gonna do that one. We're gonna do that one. And this hose here, I'm gonna connect as well. Um, if there's no issues hooking those up, then we're just gonna move on from that. Otherwise, I'll see you in a few minutes in this video. Um, we're gonna put on the fan last. I just figured it's easier to get this stuff with the fan out. Okay, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so we got all these connected. And I mean, as you can see, there's tons of room here. Like, look at this hose, right? It's not even touching anything. Uh, yeah, this, this worked. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, guys, next we're putting on the fan. So there's the fan. So you gotta have the bolts in here. Um, see what I mean? You put it in and then you're gonna have to screw those onto that so i'm gonna do that right now okay guys so as you can see the fan is on nothing rubs anywhere like this work this is gonna work perfect guys um so what we gotta do now so i never did end up draining the oil out of the engine i only drained this cooler so i think what we need to do is put about maybe 90 milliliters so almost one liter of engine oil to this because I, I kind of paid attention to what came out and about a liter came out so we're gonna put like just under a liter start it turn it off right and then check it with the dipstick and decide what to do uh it, this this thing takes i mean depending on where you live but if you live anywhere where it gets hot in the summer like it does here like you guys wouldn't believe i put uh 10 w40 in castrol that's it and uh, okay and I do have a video, guys, on how to do a complete oil change on one of these. 
Uh, I get into the little gaskets and the filter and everything. So I will put a link in the description to that video in case you already drained all your oil. Or if you want to do an oil change yourself, it's not bad once you watch this video. And then as far as the transmission goes, so when we unhook that, very little came out. I'm going to say maybe like, I don't know, 100 milliliters. So you just pull out the dipstick here and you just add a hundred milliliters of transmission oil and it takes just regular dextron 3 transmission automatic transmission fluid if you have an automatic which is what we have uh, dextron 3 automatic transmission fluid you can buy it anywhere okay so that's that and as far as the coolant goes uh, let me take you into the garage right now and show you how to mix it and everything but we won't be able to put it in right away because we still have one last problem, which is this hose, see? It doesn't reach this inlet. So I already got this figured out, guys. So I will get to that last. Okay, so I'm gonna fill up the engine oil, fill up the transmission oil, and then I'm taking you in the garage to show you the coolant and how to prepare it. Okay, guys, as far as antifreeze goes, so we're just gonna use this antifreeze here. It's for all vehicles, good enough. It's only like, $15 a jug versus the Mercedes stuff, which is like $30 a jug or, or even 40. Okay, so at the back of this, see this is concentrate. So that means you have to mix this with water. See, depending on where you live, um, you know, they usually you would mix it 50-50, half water, half this stuff. And that will get you up to, in the winter time, 37 uh, Celsius, minus 37 Celsius, or minus 34 Fahrenheit, right? But in our case, we live in Canada, it does get colder than that. So we're gonna mix ours 40% antifreeze, uh, or sorry, 60% antifreeze, 40% water, and that will get us all the way up to minus 52 Celsius, um, Minus 62 Fahrenheit guys, so that's what we're gonna do. So so this is how you do it. You don't just use regular tap water. You have to buy this stuff. This is for batteries or radiators, deionized water, right? So what we did is, you know, we had an empty container. We filled it up with water. We marked it. That's about 40% water. And then we'll fill it up to there with this stuff, right? And we're gonna mix it. So let me do that. Okay, so I filled it up and then you just give it a good mix. Okay, this is ready to be poured into the Mercedes. Okay guys, well, I ended up filling up the radiator with antifreeze. Look how nice that looks. I got it to the point where it started coming out of this. Uh, it took a while because the thermostat's holding it back, but it's coming out. So, I mean, there should be no air in the system already. Okay, so now to this hose. So I ended up going to a store and I was hoping something out of a different car would match, but unfortunately, uh, I couldn't find anything. So, uh, what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna cut this right in half here, just with a utility knife. So I'll do that right now, and then we're gonna put one in on there, one in on here. Okay, guys, so as you can see, we cut it, and that is how much we're short. So, I got a stainless steel pipe uh, it's one and three eighths, right? It's actually pretty thin, so it's not gonna obstruct anything, right? So, as you can see on these lines here, and on that one is where we're gonna cut it. We're gonna slide it in there, slide it in there, clamp it, clamp it, and guess what? That will fix our problem, guys. See what I mean? Okay, I'm gonna grab the grinder and cut these right now. Okay guys, so there it is. Make sure your edges are not sharp. So I sanded these nice after I cut them. So we're just gonna put that in there. One, two, three, four clamps, and that part is done. So I'm doing that right now. Okay guys, so there it is. That looks pretty sweet if you ask me. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top this thing up all the way to the top. Okay guys, she's full. Okay, so now just loosely we're putting the cap on. We're gonna go inside the car and start the motor. Okay, we're gonna start it. Um, we're gonna let it run for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. 
So let's do that first. So that oil gate should just pop up. There it goes. So it's got oil pressure. Okay, everything's looking good. So you wanna put your heater on max. So put the heater on max, fan on max. Okay, okay, now we're gonna turn it off. We're gonna go outside and we're gonna check, you know, the engine oil first. Make sure it's a uh, good level. Okay, the engine level is perfect. It's right on max. Um, so we're gonna put that back in. Okay, next we're gonna just top this up, whatever went down. Basically nothing went down. So we're good there. We're gonna close this up. And with the heater on full, guys, we're just gonna go for a tiny drive, like I'm talking 45, 50 seconds. Just like down this street and then back into my driveway here. And then we're gonna come in here and that way it won't be hot enough where this will blow up in your face. So you'll be able to open this and top it up if it needs to be topped up. And also by then you should feel heat coming out of your heater. That way you know that it's circulating through all your heater system and you don't have any air in your system. So that's the plan there. And also at that time, we'll be able to check the transmission oil. So that's the plan with that, guys. So I'm gonna do all that right now. Okay, guys, she's blowing heat already. Uh, we've only been driving for about 45 seconds. So it's it's good. That's the best way to get the air out of uh, the hoses and that. And the heating system is honestly, let the car be shooken around from, from driving. Okay, let's head back to the house. And we'll check all the fluids. Okay guys, it's kind of hard to see, but transmission level is perfect. Everything's looking good. So you're obviously going to check for leaks every day for the next few days. Check your oil weekly, check your coolant. When it's cold, don't open it hot. So what we're gonna do now guys, is we're gonna get cleaned up, get suited up nice. And on this extremely hot day guys, we're gonna go for a nice cruise in this. And we're gonna go into some drive throughs we're gonna sit in one spot and we're gonna see if she gets hot or if it's working better than the original rad. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to Bravo Summer Girl. <laughs> and hit that like button or turn off a thousand years of bad luck. And make sure to hit that big subscribe button. <laughs> and if we have a bell, hit it. Better All right, let's do it, boys and girls. Subscribe to Boys and girls.